Rhwn hwn da, croeso i Caerdydd a'r Naiad Dewi Sant. Good afternoon and welcome to Cardiff and to St. David's Hall. As president of the university, it's my great pleasure to welcome you to this graduation ceremony or congregation, as it's more properly called. And I extend particularly warm greetings to parents and partners and others whose love and support will have made a major contribution to the success of uh, those who are graduating today. I also offer, of course, my personal congratulations to those graduands. I rejoice at your achievement, and you can be confident that the qualification which you've earned from Cardiff University will be respected, highly respected, not just in the United Kingdom, but right across the whole world. That reputation has been built over many years, and it's been strongly endorsed by the United Kingdom Higher Education Quality Assurance Agency, which assesses university teaching standards. To maintain those attributes, the university continues in its commitment to invest in learning provision with 50 million pounds worth of investment just in this year. And it's spread across high technology, student accommodation, and other innovative facilities. Such developments also reinforce Cardiff's standing as one of Britain's leading research-led universities. We are now officially ranked sixth out of, sorry, seventh out of 106 uh, British institutions uh, for the quality of the research done here. And with the further strength that came as a result of the historic merger between Cardiff University and the University of Wales College of Medicine in 2004, we've seen huge rises in the awards to the university in recent years. Our income from that source is now at 80 million pounds a year. And it's performance like that that has made the internationally renowned magazine, The Scientist, judge Cardiff University to be the second best in the United Kingdom and the 12th best in the whole of the world uh, as, as they put it in their annual assessments, the best place for postdoctoral work. All of these factors have an obvious effect on the attractiveness of Cardiff as a place of learning. This year, we had 20,000 full-time and 7,000 part-time undergraduate and graduate students. There are no less than eight applications for every place available in Cardiff. And the overwhelming majority of the people who gain access to the university have made this university their first choice. We continue also to experience growth in applications from qualified overseas students when most universities in the United Kingdom are suffering a fall in such applications. And I hope that there's no one here, I doubt if there is, who accepts the pessimistic propaganda that today's United Kingdom and international youngsters are looking for some kind of soft option. First of all, there is no soft option. And secondly, the rises in applications uh, for admission to Cardiff University are in mathematics and sciences, engineering, the medical disciplines, as well as in the other subjects in the university's curriculum. All of that and more, of course, gives us great confidence and great satisfaction. And perhaps I should enter uh, an apology for such manifest boasting about the prowess of this university and the people who learn here and the people who teach and research here. But frankly, any apology from me would be somewhat half-hearted. If the president of this university can't blow the trumpet on such a day 
of celebration when there is manifestly and objectively so very much to celebrate. It's difficult to know when pride can be proclaimed. And I've got to do it anyway because I feel so much pride that if I didn't do it in degree ceremonies like this, I'd burst and that would make an awful mess. In any case, I plead mitigating modesty because in my boasting I haven't even mentioned the designated centers of international excellence in the departments of the university, the forthcoming Cardiff International Academy of the Voice, which will gain international renown, and I'm glad to say uh, relates to singing and not to talking, the academic, sporting, and cultural achievements of our students, including again the Guardian Student Newspaper of the Year National Award for Agair Heev, the newspaper of the Cardiff Students' Union. And I haven't mentioned the very many prizes, awards, and other distinctions won by our academic staff whose abilities and commitment to their students are obviously preeminent contributions to the advancing success of learners and the advancing reputation of this university. All of those and many other attainments are worthy of acclamation and they give manifold, manifold proof of prowess, of advancing standards, of opportunity, excellence and innovation, of Cardiff's commitment to nourishing the potential of those who come here from all parts of the United Kingdom and of the world and all cultures to learn and to use their talents to fulfill themselves and to serve the interests of wider humanity. It's that, of course, that we're here to celebrate today and it is the greatest source of satisfaction to everybody concerned with the university. So, today, on that subject and this ceremony, I draw your attention to the fact that the procedures and the words relating to the various stages of the ceremony are printed in your program under the relevant heading. As you'll see, the congregation will begin with the reading of the graduation proclamation in English and in Welsh by Ellery James. Following that, the university director, Dr. Chris Turner, will read the authorization for the admission of graduates to degrees, and we'll then proceed to admit you to your degree. Graduands will be presented by their head of school, pro vice chancellor or professor, and will be admitted to their degrees by the vice chancellor, Dr. David Grant. After that, Dr. Turner will ask all graduates to, uh, and diplomates to stand, and you'll be greeted by myself and by the warden of the University Guild of Graduates, Mr. Robert Barnes. Dr. Turner will then ask all of you who have received an initial uh, award in a health profession to stand for the reading of the pledge and Catherine Page of the School of Medicine will first read the pledge in Welsh and then all diplomates and graduates in the health professions will read the pledge together in English. Then in the final part of this congregation, the orator of our university, Professor David Skilton, will introduce Mr. Niall Dixon for the award of an honorary fellowship of Cardiff University in recognition of his distinguished services to broadcasting and to policy analysis and improvement in the health service. Now, Mr. Dixon is at the moment somewhere between here and Swindon. We understand on a train because the M4 motorway has come to a complete standing and unfortunately the gift of flight is not within the capacity of the president of Cardiff University but we're working on that and I'm sure the people in our science departments will find a means of providing me with that power but uh, Niall Dixon will be here before we get to that part uh, in the proceedings otherwise I'll just have to impersonate him and try and uh, make up for his absence. During the proceedings, 
I'd be obliged if you'd applaud only after the Vice-Chancellor has admitted each group of graduates to their degrees, not as each one crosses the stage. I know that such restraint can be very difficult in uh, these celebratory circumstances, but time and uh, considerations for the health of your hands mean that uh, it is necessary to show that restraint. Before I conclude, I repeat something you've heard before, the modern litany, please ensure that all mobile phones are switched off. Babies crying and uh, shouts of ecstasy from uh, pleased and proud parents are completely natural accompaniments to a ceremony like this, but telephone tones are not. And in the last ceremony, the 1.30 ceremony this afternoon, we had two lots of mobile phones going off and the embarrassment felt by the people was excruciating, uh, especially when we threw them down the stairs. But hopefully that won't occur in this ceremony. I thank you for your attention and I hope you greatly enjoy yourselves this afternoon. Awen Gwirionedd. Byddet hysbys i aelodau'r brifysgol ac i bawb sydd yn bresennol, y cynhelir heddiw y pumed dydd o fisgorffennaf 2006, yma yn Ninas Caerdydd, gynulliad awdurddodedig Prifysgol Cymru, i dderbyn i'w priodol raddau, fersonau da ei gair, sydd trwy yfrydaeth yn y brifysgol, a thrwy ddisg, medr a dyfol barhad, wedi teilyngu'r cyfryw raddau yn unol a gordyniadau'r brifysgol. Gyda phob gweddi a dymuniad a rydyn fwynhau iechyd a hir hoedl i wasanaethu eu hoes a'u cenedl dan fendyth y nef. Yna dy oleuni a gyfyd mewn tywyllwch a dywyllwch a fydd fel hanner dydd. A rhai y fyddant ohono ti a adeiladant yr hen ddiffaith leoedd. Gorau awen gwirionedd, the best inspiration is truth. Be it known to members of the university and to all here present that an authorised congregation of the University of Wales is being held here in the city of Cardiff on the 5th of July 2006 to admit to their appropriate degrees worthy persons who have, through study at the university and through learning, ability and perseverance been deemed worthy of such degrees in accordance with the ordinances of the university, in the hope that they may be given health and long life to serve their generation and their country under the blessing of heaven. Then shall thy light rise in obscurity, and thy darkness be as the noonday, and they that shall be of thee shall build the old waste places. Byddet hysbys i alodau'r brifysgol ac i bawb sydd yn bresennol. Fod y brifysgol wedi rhoddi'r awdurdod i Dr. David Grant i dderbyn i'w graddau fyfarwydd Prifysgol Cardiff a enillodd raddau yn unol a rheolau'r brifysgol. Gwelir enwau'r rhai gellir a'u dderbyn i'w graddau yn y cynulliad hwn yn y rhestrau printiedig sydd wedi a'u dosbarthu. Let it be known to members of the university and to all who are present that the university has granted authority to Dr. David Grant to admit to, to their degrees students of Cardiff University who have qualified for degrees according to the regulations of the university. The names of those who may be admitted to their degrees in this congregation are to be seen on the printed lists that have been distributed. Anhydeddus Isgang Hethlor, Cyflwynir gan Arathro and Taka, Disgyblion on Prifysgol Ni a Enillodd Ddiploma. I, Professor Antaka, 
present for a diploma in nursing, Vanessa Cool. <clears throat> Una Cathery Gunter. Catherine Anne Haig. Sharon Jordan. Janet Leslie Price. Judith Ann Prosser. Anne Marie Argyle. Jane Carlick Smith. Ruth Jackson. Carol McCusker, Natalie Moon, Sue Pierce. Sandra Phillips. Karen Richards. Claire Stevens. Suzanne Elizabeth Thomas. Angela Jane Williams. Vanda Maria Williams. And uh, good afternoon. At this point in the ceremony, and at other equivalent times, I will speak in Welsh to admit groups of graduands. Each degree has a formula of admission which, when translated, means, by the authority conferred upon me by the university, I admit you to the degree, which I will name, and to all the privileges of that degree. Rui Audir Dod Abrivasgol, a Amdir Yedwid e me, der Banyab Hui e the Ploma. Congratulations. Very well done. In adult nursing, Michelle Berry. Claire Louise Bertarelli. Kerry Francis Brooks. Claire Louise Burnett, Sarah Louise Francis, Hello. 
Eleanor Blanche Gerard. Sarah Kim Griffiths. Lee Ann Jones. Virginia Cohen Jones. Sean Georgina Oldham. Karen Michelle Price. Amy Victoria Rowley. Jane Ryle. Tania Maria Shepherd. Rachel Sterling. Helen Patricia Thomas. Emma Woolley. Nadia Yassin. Prui Audir Dod of Rivasco, a Amdir Yedweed Emi, their Banyav Hui, is the plumber. Congratulations. In mental health nursing, Helen Mary Brimble. Sean Alexia Davis. Margaret Sean Elson. Leanne Hill. Andrew John Trailer. Rui Audir Dod Abrivasco, and the Riedwid Imi Derbanyav Hui is the plumber. Congratulations. In professional practice, Kerry Phillips. Jane Arlene Soper. In dermatology professional practice, Eleanor Mai Davis. Janice Humber. Rui 
Gaudir dod a brifosgol, a ymddir iedwyd i mi dar baniaf chwi i the plumma. Congratulations. And we did this East Gang Hethlor, Kavluinir Gan Arathro and Taka, the Scublion on Privasco Ni, are in Ithoth Rav Baglor Meun Vidraiyath. I, Professor Anne Tucker, present the degree of Bachelor of Midwifery, Kendall Ann Donoghue. Karis Margaret Gibbard. I'd also like to say that Karis has been awarded the Eleanor Bradley Prize. Well done. Victoria Kate Hampson. Lydia Ruth Martin. Julia Ann Morgan. Sarah Georgina Wallace. Kerry Ann Woodland. Rui Aldir Dod a Brivasgol, a Amdir Yedwid i mi der Baniav Hui, Irav Baglor Man Vid Gregiai, Aki Hoch Freyna Ravham. Congratulations. <laughs> And who did this East Gang Hethlor, Kevluinir Gan Arathro Am Taka, the Scablion on Privaskol Ni, a Enithlov Rav Baglor Meun Narsio. I, Professor Am Taka, present for the degree of Bachelor of Nursing and in Adult Nursing, Michelle Allen. Claire Elizabeth Amos. Julie Elizabeth Bonsall. Hannah Bridger. Julie Christine Brimble. Samantha Kerry Buckley. Emma Louise Butler. Catherine Chaplin. Beth Katrina Chin. Kerry Jane Collins. Gemma Faye Davis. Catherine Jane Davis.
Kimberly Jane Davis. Lisa Mai Davis. Rachel Diana Davis. Sarah Louise Duncan. Amy Evans. Claire Evans. Rachel Tina Evans. Lynette Ann Fox. Hui au dyrs dod a phrifosgol, a am ddiwr iedwyd i mi der baniaf chwi, i raf baglor mewn nesio, ac i holch ffreiniau'r rath hon. Congratulations. Louise Goodwin. Carey Griffiths. Sarah Louise Hammett. Kate Elizabeth Harding. Lisa Marie Harvey. Joanne Marion Hawkins. Robert Wayne Hawkins. Joanne Elizabeth Holvey. Sue May Kelly Horn, Nat Natalie Hopkins, Maxine Ann Hopner, Donna Helen Hornby. Rachel Ann Hughes. <laughs> Tarina Carol Hunt. Helen Julie James. Lisa James. Michael Craig Jenkins. Philip James Jenkins. Stephen Anthony Jenkins.
Rhwi awdur dod y brifosgol a ymddir iedwyd i mi der baniaf chwi i rod daglor mewn nasio ac i holl frania rhaf hon. Congratulations. Kerry Jones. Katie Ann Margaret Jones. Rachel Ann Jones. Sarah Elizabeth Jones. Terence David Kemp. Venetia Louise Lamb. Kelly Ann Lewis. Alice Lillian Lovering. Wendy Ann Marshall. Kate Louise Maunder. Suzanne McAuliffe. Angela Mel MacDonald. Gemma Meredith. <coughs> Rachel Sean Miles. Louise Mary Morgan, Sean Poulin Morgan, Claire Louise Morris, Samantha Claire Nicholas. Katrine Page. Sarah Jessica Pepperell. Am the Riedwid e me, der Banyav Hui, Irath, Daglor Manasio, Aki Hoch, Frenya Rath Hom. Congratulations. Well done. Charmaine Marie Phelps, Alison Jane Price, Jolene Mary Reddin,
Natalie Francis Reed. Anna Lindsay Roynon. Lisa Caroline Sawyer. Andrew David Rolf Settery. Pauline Sylvia Simpson. Andrea Maria Slater. Catherine Julia Mary Tanner. Denise Martha Louise Templeman. Ruth Thomas. Amanda Williams. Hannah Victoria Woods. Tracy Elizabeth Woods. Michelle Elizabeth Yeo. Rui ar dyrdod y Prifosgol, a ymddiwr iedwyd i mi derbyniaf chwi i rôl beglor mewn nasio ac i holl ffreiniau'r rôl hon. Congratulations. In children's nursing, Lisa Marie Adshead. Emma Kate Ahern. Wendy Georgina Bebbington. Fiona Diana Deborah Bullock. Emily Jane Christian. Rosemary Ann Fals Gutierrez. Sarah Elizabeth Goerman Lewis. Maya Hallett. And Harrod Dwinwin Jones. Sarah Jalanta Kingsbury. Judith Lewis. Eleanor Claire Perry. Gemma Louise Pryor. Julie Margaret Rees.
Rebecca Leonie Smith. Esther Louise Taylor. Jenny Tunley. Joanna Claire Underwood. Rui a'r dyr dod a brifasgol, a am the riedwyd i mi, der baniaf chwi, i rach baglor mewn nesio, ac i hoch frenia'r rach hon. Congratulations. In mental health nursing, Mark Francis Luke Bradshaw. Sarah Jane Capsey. Paula Annette Daniels. Catherine Ann Hopkins. Gazala Yan. Gareth John Morgan. Gareth has also been awarded the Nicola Glennis Weaver Prize. Well done. Scott Powis. Sarah Louise Rickey. Trui our dear dad of Rivasco. A am the Riedwid i mi, der baniaf chwi, i rach baglor mewn nesio, ac i hoch freiniau'r rach hon. Congratulations. Anhydeddus is Ganghethor, Cyblwynir gan yr athro an tacca, Ysgyblion o'n prifysgol ni a enillodd radd baglor mewn fyddoniaeth. I, Professor an tacca, present for the degree of Bachelor of Science, Michelle Bunce. Noreen Lewis. Emma Peters. Karen Phillips. Karen has also been awarded the Claire Maria Wood Memorial Prize. Well done. Janet Saunders. Lynn Jane Walker. Rhwy awr dyr dod a brifysgol, a ymddyr iedwyd i mi, der baniaf chwi, i radd baglor mewn gwyddoniaeth, 
Aki Hoch Franya Ratham. Congratulations. Good afternoon, I'm Professor Ken Woodhouse, Pro Vice Chancellor, and I will be presenting to the Vice Chancellor those who are to receive postgraduate degrees and diplomas. Can we this is going to be a good thing? Can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? Can we do this? I, Professor Ken Woodhouse, present for the degree of Master of Science, Victoria Rees. Fatima Ani Haj Mohammed Dowd. Georgina Hurahan. Thomas Kerpal. Regina Lay. Louise Mary Taylor. And I should also like to add that Louise has been awarded the Master of Nursing Society Prize. Well done. Louise Marjorie Bishop. Rhwi aw dyr dod a brifasgol, am ddyr iedwyd i mi der baniaf chwi, i raf athro mewn gwyddoniau, ac i hoch rhenio raf hon. Congratulations. And we have this in the world. We have a lot of people who are in and I have some old people who are in the world. I, Professor Ken Woodhouse, present all those who are to receive their degrees in absentia. Through our dear God, our Prevascal, and the Yedweed, I me, Der Banyav, a Chrya Nodweed. And I have an old deb, you gradai pathnesso, aki hoch freniar gradai hani. We now come to a very important and indeed a very solemn part of today's proceedings, and that is the reading of the pledge. Can I ask all of you who have received a Health Profession Award today to stand to recite the pledge which will be read by Catherine Page. The text is in your graduation programme and it will be read first in Welsh in its entirety and then in English and please repeat each sentence in the English version. Following the reading of the pledge, you will be welcomed to the health professions by Mr Michael Fisher, a representative of the Healthcare Inspectorate, Wales. A thawath mae fiblinoriaeth gyntaf fydd gofalu am fyngrheibion. Byddaf yn gyredig gyda phob claf ac yn drechaf i gyfeithrefu yn y ffeithlon gyda nhw. Byddaf yn parchu ei urddas a'u preifatrwy, a'u hawl i gyfrannu'n llawn at benderniadau yn linau gofal. Byddaf yn onest ac yn ddibynadwyd bob amser a can parchi a diogeli gwybodaeth cyfrinachol. Ni ddydd yn credodau personol yn amharu ar ofal fy ngleifion. Trwy gyd nafod cyfyngiadau fy nhymhwysedd, 
byddaf bob amser yn diwydd ar i bymwybodaeth am sgiliau proffesiynol. Os bydd gennyf reswm da i gredu, na dwi fi neu'n cydweithwyr yn addas i weithio, byddaf yn gweithredu'n gyflym i ddiogleli chleifion rhag perygl. Ni byddaf yn camddefnyddio fy sgiliau proffesiynol, a byddaf yn gweithio gyda'n cydweithwyr yn y ffordd orau er lles y cleifion. Yn yr holl faterion hyn, ni fyddaf byth yn gwahaniaethu'n anheg yn erbyn fy nghleifion na'n cydweithwyr, a byddaf yn barod i gyfiawnhau fy nghweithgaredoedd i fynd ym mhob achos. Rhoddaf yr yddewid yma ar fy llw yn wirfyddodol ac o ddifrif. I promise that I will make the care of my patients my first concern. I will be considerate to all my patients and will strive to communicate effectively with them. I will respect my patients' dignity and autonomy and their right to be fully involved in decisions about their care. At all times, I will be honest and trustworthy respecting and protecting confidential information. My personal beliefs will not prejudice my care of patients. Recognising the limits of my competence, I will keep my professional knowledge and skills up to date. If I believe that I or a colleague may not be fit to practice, I will act quickly to protect patients from risk. I will not abuse my, my professional position and will work with colleagues in ways that best serve patients. I will never discriminate unfairly against patients or colleagues, and I will always be prepared to justify my actions to them. I make this promise solemnly, freely, and upon my honour. Fel Cymru Lleolydd o Brefesiannau Iechyd Cymru, fe crosaeth i'r Brefesiannau Gofal Iechyd Hyn. Arwyr sydd wedi derbyn eich grafau y prynhawn ma, gyd sefyll i dderbyn cyfarchion llawydd y Prifasgol a warden urdd y graddedigion. Can I invite all of you who have been admitted to your degrees this afternoon to stand so that you can receive the greetings of the President of the University and the Warden of the Guild of Graduates. Boyd Eich Gofel and Wastad, Dros Luiz Ak and Radiz Ein Trivascol, Ak Erches Ein Bied. May your care ever be for the success and good name of our university and the well being of our world. Llong y farchiadau, pros yw'r cynnis i aelodaeth urdd graddedigion Prifasgol Cymru. Congratulations, welcome to membership of the Guild of Graduates of the University of Wales. Could I ask the platform party to sit and the graduates to stand, please? I'm sure that uh, all you very proud graduates and diplomates would like to join in a tradition at Cardiff of these ceremonies, and that is for you to pay a special tribute to your families and friends, and indeed to the academic staff who have supported you over many long years in reaching this point in your career today. Now is your opportunity to turn around, to greet your family and friends, and to say a special and very public thank you to them 
by giving them all a big round of applause. Please be seated. Vice Chancellor, at the end of 2003, when Neil Dixon left the BBC as its social affairs editor in order to head up a major medical think tank, there was speculation that perhaps the BBC was not where he would wish to grow old. Be that as it may, the problems of unhappy ageing were familiar to him, for after Edinburgh University and as well as a school teacher, he became a press officer at the policy and research body, the National Corporation for the Care of Old People, now the Centre for Policy on Ageing. Whence he moved to head of publishing at Age Concern until 1981. His rise in journalism was swift. In 1981, he took over as editor of Therapy, a weekly newspaper for the remedial professions, and in 1983 was appointed editor of Nursing Times, which during his editorship doubled its circulation and won a string of awards including Business and Professional Periodical of the Year, and that twice. In 1988, Neil Dixon moved to the BBC as health correspondent and rose to become Chief Social Affairs Correspondent and then Social Affairs Editor in 1995, heading a team of more than 80 journalists covering all aspects of social policy. His work concentrated on the 10 o'clock news and the Today programme, and he was also responsible for numerous programmes on health and social issues. In 1997, he won the Charles Fletcher Medical Broadcaster of the Year Award from the British Medical Association, and in 2002, a nomination in the Royal Television Society Awards. His move to the King's Fund at the beginning of 2004 was welcomed as bringing new vitality to that independent health think tank, training and development organisation. After years at the BBC, Mr Dixon maintains a well-practised political impartiality but subscribes in principle to the value of free health care, while believing that the King's Fund is influential in proportion as it bases its work on evidence and not overt ideological commitment. It sets out clear objectives in tackling inequalities in health provision, of which it is only possible to mention a few, such as access to health care by black and minority ethnic groups, all-round care for the elderly and people with long-term conditions, recruitment of health workers from local populations in deprived areas, and bringing balance into the public debate about complementary therapies. Andrew Davis is Gang Hechlor, Kavluina VT, Neil Dixon, Del Kamrand, Eran Radez, Privaskol, Kaibdiv. Truir awdir dod a rogwyd i mi, gan y cyngor der baniaf di, fel cymrawd er anhradedd, drifasgol cair dydd. President, Vice-Chancellor, members of the academic staff, ladies and gentlemen, and graduates of Cardiff University, uh, thank you so much for bestowing me with the fellowship of this great institution. And let me add my congratulations to everyone who's graduated today. Um, another, another hurdle cleared uh, after a lot of hard slog, I guess, and also uh, what is actually quite a relatively short period in your life, but for most of us, I think, these years are among the most influential and will affect the way that we conduct and hold the rest of our lives. Uh, for virtually everyone here, it also means joining a profession, which of course confers both 
privilege and responsibilities. Uh, interestingly enough, in the pledge you just read out, there's one word that resonated uh, most strongly with me, and that was the word trustworthy. Because it seems to me that trust is at the heart of what being a professional is all about. It will mean, above all, that you are dealing with people often at a painful and, and traumatic period in their lives, and they will put their trust in you. Trust is at the heart of professionalism. And in spite of all the media reports, and, and a much less deferential society, I have to say, trust in health professionals remains extremely high. But I don't think trust is any more conditional. It's no longer unconditional. I believe all professions now understand that respect and trust is, is learned, uh, earned rather, not given as of right. And that's true actually between professionals as well as between them and their patients and clients. We used to see professionals really as autonomous individuals who are working on their own. I don't think that is true now. It probably wasn't ever so true among nursing colleagues uh, who more often operated in, as teams. But I think we're now seeing more multidisciplinary teams as the way in which healthcare is delivered. I began my life, as was mentioned, my career rather, as a teacher. And it was certainly true in that Edinburgh Comprehensive uh, that you were only as good as your as the last lesson that you gave. Uh, certainly journalists aren't really very worried about how, collectively anyway, people regarded them. If they were, they'd be in permanent depression. Um, but there, there is a, a danger, I think, in, for all of us, whatever jobs that we hold, and especially when we have that trust of being, being a professional, uh, that we become self-important, that we think that we are more important than we actually are. And keeping a sense of perspective uh, will always be important as remembering the words of that pledge. I recall being in an old people's home filming with a television crew. There was an elderly lady uh, in the corner and I, I did think we were intruding a little. And I went over and I have to say in a rather patronizing tone, uh, shouted in her ear, hello, do you know who I am? She turned and looked at me quizzically shook her head and whispered, no dear, but if you ask Matron, I'm sure she'll be able to tell you. <laughs> I spent 15 years covering news for the BBC, and I think I was often struck by how easy it was to lose that sense of perspective. It's not so much that your own pressures disappear when you see the terrible things others go through, but you can't help be, but be impressed by the incredible way people cope. And your professional careers will be dotted with examples where you see enormous courage uh, from individuals in adversity. I only cried uh, once, I think, in that time, and that was at the cemetery in Dumblain after visiting one of the families. Sixteen children and their teacher were gunned in that primary school. One year on, the families were as shattered as ever, yet trying to pick up their lives after a horror that's simply unimaginable. The minister at the cathedral, who had had to keep parents away from the scene, herself severely traumatized, yet who could steal herself to support others. Or the families of Harold Shipman's victims describing how they trusted this man, and yet showed no bitterness. The head teacher at Soham Village College, who managed to galvanize his school and make it a happy place again after the murder of two little girls in the caretaker's house. Sarah Payne, an ordinary working-class mum who found her voice to call for more protection for children after her daughter was murdered. It's often the little things you notice. Um, her other children, a boy and a girl, uh, the girl, I have to say, uh, the spitting image of her murdered sister, they sat watching a cartoon on television, very mundane, and three bicycles uh, were crowding the hall. I could go on, these were ordinary people like us, put in extraordinary situations. And they become extraordinary themselves because of their experience. I saw a particular form of extraordinary behavior, but in a professional working life in nursing or midwifery, you will see it all the time. And that is a privilege. The trouble is, too often we live in a world of stereotypes. I suppose we need a kind of shorthand to make sense of things. But we pigeonhole people. They're this sort of person or that sort of person. They're sporty or clever or young or old, a successor or 
or, 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 or a failure. We judge too easily by accent, by skin color, by sexual orientation, by religion, or by age. Years ago, I remember when I was editor of Nursing Times, I came across two nurses who uh, created something they called cosmic nursing. And they called it cosmic nursing because they looked around and they saw professionals treating old people as if they came from outer space. So they thought they better come from outer space as well. And in a host of ways, they challenged established practice. They, they took carpets from people's own home and put them in, the, in, the, in their rooms in the nursing home so that they were familiar. They challenged a practice, thankfully long since uh, gone, I hope, uh, of where elderly people were restrained in long-stay wards. They put themselves endlessly in the position of those that they were caring for. And that's what being a professional for me is about. Of course, the professional training, the knowledge that you've acquired, the insights you've developed while at the university, they will be vital over the years ahead. But on top of that, you will bring yourselves. So it's a combination of your experience and yourself, but who you are remains important, whether you are a nurse, a midwife, a doctor, or a journalist. And keep with that a sense of perspective about our own humanity, because that is what matters most. So to the university, thank you for this. I am honoured. Uh, to the graduates, good luck with your careers. Thank you. I'm very glad, Neil, that you could uh, make it and that the trains show a significant improvement on uh, car journeys. I speak academically, of course, because they've taken my license away for six months, which is a matter of fascination to the Daily Mail and nobody else at all. As president, it does make me feel very self-righteous, however, about traveling down the motorway. As president of the university, it is now my duty to draw these proceedings to a close. Naturally, this occasion is one of the most pleasurable in the whole university calendar, indeed in life itself. It's a joy to see the pride and uh, indeed the relief of uh, the new graduates as they come and cross the platform. In some cases it's relief at the completion of a crucial chapter of development in their lives. In other cases it's a sense of relief at the miracle of managing to navigate this platform in some of the shoes that decorate some of the feet. I speak entirely, of course, of the young women, although uh, from time to time in these ceremonies, the men's shoes tend to be a bit exotic as well. Anyway, everybody made it, and uh, nobody fell down, nobody knocked off a mortarboard. I only heard two mobile phones. Uh, the snipers missed them, so that was all right. And really, what I want to say is to the graduates today, the diplomates and graduates, I hope you take with you very happy memories of your time in Cardiff. I hope that you feel confident that your studies here have been a valuable contribution to your lives. And I hope you take with you strong determination to use your talents to your maximum potential for your own fulfillment and also for the benefit of your fellow human beings everywhere. To us, of course, you will always be Cardiff people. I trust that you will be proud to carry that identity, indeed that distinction. And I wish each and every one of you good fortune, good health, and every success and fulfillment in the future. Bob Hoyle, a full look. <laughs>